Hey guys, Josh Roof here, and I'm absolutely stoked to start this class out with a writing philosophy that just so happens to align perfectly with a blog post this guy recently wrote. I'll be using that post to go through the top five reasons polymaths are making a comeback. What's a polymath? It's a diamond gold jewel rare foundation that copywriting success is built off of. For one, we'll cover that in full detail now. All right, here we go. Are the days of Da Vinci dead? Is it possible to be a world-class copywriter, blogger, magazine writer, um, best-selling author all at once? A lot of people would say, not a chance. Those times are long gone. Nothing was discovered back in the days of the Renaissance man, the polymath. Right now, the best you can do is pick your field and master it. The devout specialist is fond of labeling the impetuous learner. Da Vinci and Benjamin Franklin being two of forgotten examples of the polymath, the jack of all trades, the chorus unites. In the modern world, it is he who specializes, who survives and thrives. There's no place for the Renaissance man and woman. My question to you is, is that true? I'll tell you right now, I don't think so. These are the five top reasons I have that the jack of all trades, or as what I like to call them, Renaissance men and women or polymaths, are making a comeback. First and foremost, the jack of all trades, master of none, it's an artificial pairing. Secondly, in a world of dogmatic specialists, it's the generalist who ends up running the show. Third, boredom equals failure. Four, diversity of intellectual playgrounds breeds confidence instead of fear of the unknown. And lastly, it's just more fun. Ultimately, these are the top five reasons, but they all spawn from this foundation of a reason. Specialization is the breeding ground of false security and broken eggs. That is, when you put all your eggs in one basket, you're in a lot of trouble when that basket breaks. The same applies to copywriting. If you want to be truly successful as a world-class creative in the specific field of copywriting, you need to be a polymath, an expert generalist. You should never, 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 ever Limit yourself to advertising copy alone, or blogging, or SEO copywriting, or any one of those strains of writing. The beauty of being a generalist is that not only do you diversify your client portfolio, you diversify your writing ability. Every writing discipline overlaps into the other writing styles and genres. Learning to write poetry, for instance, enhances your voice with poetic rhythm. Learning direct mail sales copywriting enhances your selling ability. Writing short stories and other forms of fiction will give you the ability to use stories, which are arguably the most primarily effective element in the world of sales and copywriting, not to mention every other form of writing. Now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and get to our top five reasons. First, jack of all trades, master of none. It's an artificial pairing. It is entirely possible to be a jack of all trades, master of many. How? Specialists overestimate the time needed to master a skill, and they confuse master with perfection. Generalists recognize that the 80-20 principle applies to skills. 20% of a language's vocabulary will enable you to communicate and understand at least 80%. 20% of a dance like tango, lead and footwork, separates the novice from the pro. 20% of the moves in a sport account for 80% of the scoring, etc. Is that settling for mediocre? Not at all. Generalists take the condensed study up to, but not beyond, the point of rapidly diminishing returns. There's perhaps a 5% comprehension difference between the focused generalist who studies Japanese systematically for two years versus the specialist who studies Japanese for 10, with the lack of urgency typical of those who claim that something takes a lifetime to, er to learn. That's hogwash. Based on my experience in research, it's possible to become a world class in almost any skill within one year. Point number two. In a world of dogmatic specialists, it's the generalist who ends up running the show. Is the CEO a better accountant than the CFO or CPA? Was Steve Jobs a better programmer than the top coders at Apple? No, but he had a broad range of skills and saw the unseen interconnectedness. As technology becomes a commodity with the democratization of information, it's the big picture generalists who will predict, innovate, and rise to power the fastest. There's a reason military generals are called generals. The third point, boredom equals failure. In a first world economy where we have the physical necessities covered with even low class income, Maslow's hierarchy of needs drives us to need more of any measure of comparative success. 
lack of intellectual stimulation, not superlative, superlative, I don't know how to say that word, superlative, superlative, <laughs> material wealth is what drives us to depression and emotional bankruptcy. Generalizing and experimenting present, prevents this, while over-specialization guarantees it. The fourth reason polymaths are making a comeback is this. Diversity of intellectual playgrounds breeds confidence instead of fear of the unknown. It also breeds empathy with the broadcast range of human conditions and appreciation of the broadest range of human accomplishments. The alternative is the defensive xenophobia and smugness uniquely common to those whose identities are defined by their job title or single skill, which they pursue out of obligation and not enjoyment. Last but not least, in fact, I think this is, this is my favorite point, it's more fun. The jack of all trades maximizes his, his or her number of peak experiences in life and learns to enjoy the pursuit of excellence unrelated to material gain, all while finding the few things he is truly he or she is truly uniquely suited to dominate. The specialist who imprisons himself or herself in self-inflicted one-dimensionality, pursuing an impossible perfection, spends decades stagnating or making imperceptible incremental improvements while a curious generalist consistently measures improvement in quantum leaps. It is only the latter who enjoys the process of pursuing excellence. So don't put experiential, excuse me, experiential blinders in the name of specializing. It's both unnecessary and crippling. Those who label you a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, are seldom satisfied with themselves. Why take their advice? Here's a description of the incredible Alfred Lee Loomis, a journalist of the highest order who, has changed, who changed the course of World War II with his private science experiments, here taken from the incredible portrait of his life, Tuxedo Park. Loomis did not conform to the conventional measure of a great scientist. He was too complex to categorize. Financier, philanthropist, society figure, physicist, inventor, amateur, dilettante, however you say that word, a contradiction in terms. So be too complex to categorize, especially if you want to become a world-class copywriter. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I want to encourage you, especially if you're the type of person who gets more out of reading than watching a video, read Tim's full blog post on the subject. It's well worth your time. All right, now that we've covered the essential, or that essential writing and lifestyle philosophy, we could get to the meat, potatoes, nuts, and bolts of how to be a world-class copywriter. Let's start with ad copy.